All right, so one of the things that I thought would be kind of interesting to do, and I especially wanted to do it right now because I've got some things taken off of the Lockheed. Um, we're in the process of installing some new uh, drains like we have on the Beach 18. Um, but I wanted to go through the differences between the Lockheed and a Beach 18. The, the airplanes are extremely close together as far as the way they look on the outside, at least to, to the layman when they walk up and actually see one of them. Um, it even took me a little while to get where I could spot a Lockheed versus a, a Beach 18 because they are, they're very similar looking airplanes. But I think when this video is over, you're going to find out that they're actually similar only in outward appearance because there pretty much is very little between the two airplanes that's the same. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna walk through some of the, the major things that are different between the two airplanes and we'll see you know, what, what, what I think makes the Lockheed a much better airplane in the long run, but, but you can judge for yourself. Um, so we'll start off with the engines and these are exactly the same engines that are running on the Beach 18. So the engines are the one thing between the two airplanes that are the same. So they're the, the uh, Pratt & Whitney R985 engines and they're really in a whole lot different between the two. Now my Beach 18 actually has a lot of STCs and those are special type certificates that have been added to it to, to change things that the original manufacturer might not have thought of when they when they built the airplane. So as an example, on the Beach 18, the air intake for the engine is actually underneath the engine. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to get you a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we're standing in front of the Beach 18 and a few of the things you can see that the air intake manifold is actually under the engine. Now typically it was actually up here inside of the engine and someone along the, the through the years decided that having the air intake on the inside of the engine actually caused the engine to lose horsepower because in theory it's sucking air through a hot engine and therefore the air going into the carburetor is actually hotter or warmer and therefore you get less horsepower out of the engine. Now I'm not sure who came up with this. I'm not sure exactly what difference it makes between the two, but they claim that, which is a lot of the problems with a lot of these STCs, is claims are made that certain things happen and I'm not sure if they actually happen and how they tested this stuff. Um, but the Beach 18 actually has the intake here. Now on the Lockheed, I'll show you in just a second, the Lockheed actually has it up here in the engine and, or you know, inside the cowling. Now, while we're on the topic of the cowling and the propeller, the Beach 18 propeller is actually shorter than the propeller on the Lockheed. And, and you can really notice this when you're taking off. Um, when you're taking off in the Lockheed and you push those throttles forward, um, it, is, it is a window shattering event. It, it, the, the thing just makes a, a huge amount of sound when it takes off, where the Beach 18 is, is a little bit quieter. So it still has a noticeable sound, but it's just nothing that, that comes close to what the Lockheed sounds like when it's leaving. So the propellers are different. The hubs are, they're both Hamilton uh, constant speed propellers. So the, this part of the propellers are actually the same. It's just the outside blade on the Lockheed is longer. And I believe it's about nine inches longer. So um, you can tell when, when you turn this propeller around here, um, you can see how close the propeller is to the fuselage and on the Lockheed it's even closer. Now the engines on the Lockheed are out a little bit farther as well so they're not they're not exactly the same uh, distance from the the fuselage so there, there's a little bit of differences there as well. Now let's jump back over to Lockheed and I'll show you where everything is over there. So this is taking a look at the uh, Lockheed and you'll notice right up in here on the inside of the engine there is a the intake. So this is the intake for the engine now or for the carburetor. So that that runs in and then comes around to the bottom of the the carburetor which is down on the bottom of the engine. So the carburetor is in the same position on both in, both engines. It's the same carburetor on both engines. But 
this one gets its air on the inside of the cowling and the and the beach at this point is getting it from the outside they're both um pretty much the same other than that though now i want to also point out here let's see if i can get it over here so you'll notice on the beach 18 and i'll show you here in just a second the beach 18 actually has a hole in the wing the leading edge of the wing um and that is the oil cooler um this is where we get air for the oil cooler so the air comes in here and blows straight through an oil cooler that i'm going to show you in just a second on the inside of the cowling so here is the oil cooler line and then you'll notice in here that runs up and goes straight through the oil cooler and out the other side of the oil cooler so now let's go take a look at how that functions on the beach 18. beach 18 we have this is an intake for going into the cabin and then this big hole right here is where the the air goes in and it actually if you got up inside the gear well you'll you would see that it actually loops around so it goes in here goes through and then loops back and blows backwards back into the engine and there is the oil cooler inside of the beach 18 so the air actually comes out of inside of the nacelle and blows into the compartment in this direction one of the things that i actually like better about the beach 18 than the lockheed is that this door as well as the the oil flow coming out of the oil reservoir i have control via mechanical linkages inside of the cockpit to where i can open and close this depending on the temperature of that air outside the airplane so on a hot day i can open these things all the way up on a cooler day or when i climb up to a certain altitude i can close them so that i keep the oil at a, at a comfortable uh, mount now the lockheed has a, a, a thermal switch in there that actually is supposed to deal with that on its own so you don't actually have any levers levers or anything to deal with um, but i find the lockheed actually runs a lot hotter on the oil temp than the 18 does the 18 does a lot better job um, via me of course of, of, or the pilot of actually making the changes it does a lot better job of regulating the temperature of the oil as long as the pilot's paying attention now you'll notice that the both airplanes have a nose compartment in them um, this beach 18 actually has an 80 gallon fuel tank that sits up here in the nose so there's not very much room up here for storage the Lockheed doesn't have a fuel tank in it um, so this airplane is actually capable of carrying 280 gallons of fuel where the Lockheed's limited to 200. Um, mo on most trips that's not really a big deal um, you get you're getting about four four and a half hours out of the Lockheed where you can go five or six hours in the Beach 18 um, but when you're flying out over the ocean like we did in one of our earlier videos when we went out to the Bahamas and got stuck in a bunch of thunderstorms um, it's really comforting knowing that you've got enough fuel to deal with the you know with having to go around all those storms so in the Lockheed I've got to do a little bit more planning um, when I'm doing the trips I don't want to be you know stuck out in, in bad weather and having to deal with very much um, so the B-18 is a little bit ahead of the Lockheed just because it has more fuel capacity um, now when the Lockheed was actually built they had a fuel tank it was a, a 50 gallon it wasn't 80 but it was a 50 gallon fuel reserve that actually would sit behind the pilot in that front left seat that's in the airplane now when joe and them uh re redid this airplane they removed that fuel tank and put a seat there thinking that you know they'd rather have a passenger there than just be able to carry more fuel and and i you know i agree we we enjoy having the, the ability to carry more people um, so, but that, that's one of the things that, that got left out of the Lockheed, but they do both have the ability to, to carry that extra fuel if you needed to. Now we're under the wing of the beach 18 right now. And one of the things you can see here is a tube. It's a, a oblong tube that runs down the length of the wing. And you'll notice the strap that goes on the bottom. If you've watched any of the other videos that I've done, you'll see where we actually had to go in and x-ray all this stuff and i had to take this strap completely out of the airplane so that we could do the the test on it as well so the deal is is that 
the Beach 18 has been used a lot, a lot in military applications and, and things like that. And they had problems with this spar cracking. And so they went back and put a spar strap on here to deal with that. And you'll notice that you have the main spar tube here and then you can't really tell, but there's tubes that, that run off at angles to another tube that's up at the uh, top and that and all of that is braced in there and that makes up that center spar that holds the airplane together so that's what actually holds the wings and the engine all attached to the fuselage so it's kind of important so the beach 18 has issues with this spar and it's you know it's just a it's a tubular built spar and and so I'm going to go over, I've actually got a spar that is out of the airplane over in my other hangar. And I'm going to walk over there and show you what a spar looks like inside of a Lockheed because it is a completely different animal. So here you have tubes and they're all just welded together to make up your spar. Let's go take a look at what a Lockheed spar looks like. So this is, I've got to be a little bit quieter over here because we've got people working in this hangar. Um, but this is the spar off of the inside of a Lockheed. Um, so you can see that there are no tubes. Everything is all built out of these triangles. And it's, a, it's an extremely heavy, heavy duty spar. So on the Lockheed, we've, there's never been a situation where a spar has come apart or cracked. So you don't have all those extra ADs and uh, x-ray things that you have to have on the Beach 18. Now this is the flap on the Beach 18 and you'll notice that this flap actually drops down and the, so the wing when the flap is up, the wing comes all the way out even with this aileron. But when you put the flaps down, it actually lowers that flap down and you lose this area on the wing because it actually becomes part of the flap over here. Um, not a big deal, but that's the, the way the flaps work on the Beach 18. So on the Lockheed, the wing, it's got split flaps on it. So the wing stays here and then the flap actually just lowers off the bottom of the wing. Now in theory, the split flap doesn't give you very much lift where this uh, flap supposedly gives you or does give you a little bit more lift when you're, when you're flying. Um, but I don't know that it matters a lot because the Lockheed, as an example, can land a lot slower than the Beach 18 can in, you know, with, those, with the flap design that it has on it. So the, the flaps on Lockheed are massive. They're, they're a lot bigger than these flaps and we'll go put those down so that you can actually see what they look like. Now, you can see that the wing itself is all still sitting out here. The flap has come down below it, but what you'll also notice is the size of this flap. So that flap is a massive flap that, that hangs down. And in addition, and this is where things start to separate drastically between the Lockheed and the Beach 18. So on the Lockheed, not only are you getting this massive flap that, that shows up down here at the, you know, on the film here, but the ailerons also droop. So as the flaps go down, the ailerons also go down. And what that amounts to is about, you know, close to 50 foot of a flap or, you know, different degrees of a flap that run from the wingtip to wingtip on the airplane. So it allows this airplane to fly a lot slower than you can in the Beach 18 when you're landing. So this is probably one of the biggest telltale signs of whether you're looking at a Lockheed or a Beach 18 is you'll notice that on the outside, so we have our vertical here but on the outside, we have additional horizontal that comes out on the outside of the Lockheed. You don't have that on a Beach 18. The Beach 18 just stops right at the vertical. The other thing that's big about the Lockheed is you'll notice the width. This, this horizontal is over 20 feet long that you're getting for, for an elevator. And so the elevators on this airplane are massive. And that allows you to, to, ha to still have 
uh, elevator when you're landing at a slow speed where the beach 18 below about 90 miles an hour at least my beach 18 below 90 miles an hour you lose the elevator and what that means is when i get ready to pull back to land the airplane to hold it off the ground i don't have any more elevator to to hold it off so the it'll if if you get too slow in the beach 18 you're just going to plow it right onto the runway where the lockheed i've got a lot more room to play and it just flies and flies um, you know down the runway um, in addition, you'll notice that not only do I have a pretty long horizontal, but here in the middle, you actually have a piece that lifts up. So as I start to, to hold the airplane and pull back more and more on the, on the horizontal, on the stick, the elevators grab this piece. So once they get up even, they'll grab this piece here and then they start to pick it up. And so what you end up with is a horizontal that goes from the end all the way over here to the other end. So it gives you a, a lot more horizontal to work with when you're, when you're going in and uh, landing at a slow speed. Now, one of the things that's different about the beach and the, and the Lockheed are the tire sizes. Now, my Lockheed, when Joe and them went through and restored it, they ended up replacing the wheels with Goodyear wheels. So the, the actual wheel hub and the brakes are all the same between the Beach 18 and the Lockheed now. But the tire sizes, the Beach 18's got a lot bigger tire on it, both on the tail wheel and on the main gear than the Lockheed has. The Lockheed's got those fenders on it, which are actually another huge advantage to the Lockheed because it keeps all the dirt and stuff from getting thrown up inside the gear wheel. Now, while we're talking about the gear, it's another thing that I really like about the Lockheed is its simplicity. So the, the, the Beach 18 actually uses a bunch of pulleys, cables, and chains and an electric motor that it uses to pick this gear up and down. And so the emergency gear extension is a little bit complicated in the sense that you got to kind of learn what you're doing and, and make sure you're doing it right. You got to make sure the gears locked down in position when you, after you stomp on the pedal. And, and so there's, there's a procedure for putting the gear down in an emergency. In the Lockheed, everything is actually driven off of a single worm gear. So you have one electric motor that's turning a, a cable, I mean, it's turning a, a shaft that puts the gear up and down. So it basically is, a, is a, you know, linkages that come out and turn that worm gear. And it's a fairly substantial worm gear that runs up and down in there to, to put the gear up and down. So adjusting the gear and, and doing all that kind of stuff on Lockheed is a lot less trouble because you don't have all those chains and the chains stretch. And so you, over time, you've got to go in and adjust all that stuff. And on the Lockheed, you don't have any of that to deal with. Now, I mentioned that there's an STC, I mean, a, a AD notice on the wing spar on the Beach 18. Um, there's also a number of other uh, ADs that exist on a Beach 18 that you have to go in and check different things. Um, that's another thing that is really nice about the Lockheed is that the Lockheed has no ADs on it. So the engines have the same ADs between the two engines, but the airplane itself uh, on the Lockheed has no actual ADs that you have to comply with. So it makes going through and doing the annual a lot less trouble and you know you can get it done faster. Um, so that that's a, another big difference between the two airplanes. Now, one of the other things that's different is the Lockheed actually does not have a retractable landing gear where the Beach 18, all three gear, all three landing gear retract up inside the fuselage. Now, the Lockheed is just as fast as this Beach 18, which my Beach 18 is an extremely fast Beach 18. It, it's, uh, I've flown with a number of 18s, and I'm not saying it's the fastest Beach 18, but it is up at the top of the, the chart. Um, and so this airplane having the, the, the tailwheel not retracting, I'm sure adds a little bit of drag to the overall equation, but it doesn't amount to a whole lot because the, the, this Lockheed in its stock configuration with no STCs on it performs absolutely as well as my Beach 18 does. So this landing gear, the, it's just a shock that goes. If you've watched any of the videos, you've seen where I've had to rebuild this thing. Um, and by the way, the rebuild so far is working out perfectly. 
um, we haven't had the thing leak at all um, but this thing just has a single shock in it and the landing gear it's it's very easy to work on it's very easy to take it out and and overhaul it um, so and, and that really is what the I guess the big point is is the the engineering that went into the, the build in the Lockheed even though the Beach 18 and this thing look a lot alike um, the engineering that went into this is just incredible I mean it, it's it's really fascinating to me to actually be working on things, mechanical things that are so simplistic in the way they work, but they do such a, a fascinating job, just like the droop mechanism on the aileron so that when you put the flaps down, the ailerons go down. That's such a simple design, but it's so effective and does its job perfectly. Um, it's just a, it's a really incredible airplane to be working on. Now, you'll notice on the, on the Beach 18, we actually have an air stair door that you can walk up and get in. This airplane actually had a similar setup, and when Joe and them restored it, uh, the air stair door was actually an STC that got added to the airplane. And, and when, when they bought it, it actually had a, an additional door that opened up here. And so this metal that's right here at this particular station has been re redone because there was a hole here. Um, but the air stair door was removed and the original door put back on because when Joe and them restored the airplane, they wanted to put it back as close to original as they could. Um, so it was, they, they elected to put the original door on here. Now this door, you'll notice I've got a, a bungee holding the door open. It, there is a latch that actually goes here to hold this door open, but um, they didn't put it back in and I've actually got the latch and it may be something that I end up adding back to this door so that you don't have to carry a bungee around with you. But overall, it's, you know, it's not too bad getting in and out of it. it you obviously have to put the ladder out and put the ladder in when you're getting in and out. So it's, it, but the ladders, you know, it's not very heavy and, and it works really well. So um, we, we haven't had too much trouble getting in and out of it obviously the air stair doors are a lot nicer because you're you just walk down the steps so they're easier to get in and out of but we've had some fairly old people in and out of it and and they haven't had any any real issues with this one either now the cockpit or the cabin in this airplane is a little bit taller than the beach 18 so you have to bend over a little bit more walking up inside the beach 18 than you do this one but the beach 18 is also a little bit fatter and, and I'll get those measurements now and we'll see exactly what the difference is between the two of them. So like everything else in life, um, you, you think things are one thing and you measure them and they're something else. So it turns out that the Beach 18 is 59 inches tall all the way through the whole cabin. So even up in the, the uh, or I'm sorry, it's 59 inches in the back. It's 49 inches up in the cockpit it's 51 inches wide all throughout the airplane. So the whole airplane, the whole cockpit is all 51 inches wide. So I thought in looking at it, it looks like the Lockheed's narrower and taller as far as the fuselage goes. But in reality, from the floor up to the ceiling, it's also 59 inches tall. So it's the same as the Beach 18. And I don't know, I don't know why I feel like when I get in the Beach 18, I'm bent over more moving up to the cabin but theoretically they're both the same so the the cabins are both the same height now in the cockpit um, we're actually 49 inches wide in the in the beach 18 we're 51 inches wide in the Lockheed so we got a little bit more width here um, and also we're 51 inches I'm sorry the we're 49 inches tall in the in the beach 18 and we're 53 inches tall in the the lockheed so the lockheed's got more height up in the the cockpit but i'm going to show you one of the things that is, is probably my least favorite thing about the lockheed and and you'll see here in just a minute and then they're both 51 inches wide so the airplanes are the same width throughout the the or i'm sorry they're the same width in the cockpit the lockheed's actually wider inside the the back of the the cockpit or back of the uh, cabin which is why i guess i feel like i've got more room in the lockheed um, and then they're the same height in in both so the the thing is is and we're going to hop in the airplane now and take a look at what it's like to sit in the front of both of these airplanes 
and, and you'll kind of see what where where my, um, my my problems are with the Lockheed um, because the BTEC team is like a it, it's marvelous. So I will uh, take the camera now and we'll hop in the airplane. All right, so we're gonna climb up here. We're getting in the Lockheed first, so you can kind of see the you know the cabin coming up here from the back door. And we just walk up here now one of the things you'll notice is there is no hump there's no step to get over the spar in this airplane the beach 18 i'll show you what i'm talking about when we get in it but getting up in the cockpit it's pretty open you just basically walk up there's a little bit of a step there but it's not really a bad a bad deal getting in here now this is the first issue is you'll notice the throttle pedestal where all of my knobs and all are that sticks out this way um, quite a bit and it's all it takes up the whole height and you'll notice in the beach 18 it's a little bit different so you got a little bit more leg room getting in and out of the the beach 18 than you do in here it's not bad but it is something that you have to deal with now my absolute disdain is you'll notice up here on the top that's where the compass is and it's a little hard to see in here with the way the light is but let me see if i can adjust that a little bit but you'll that's that's the compass up at the very top above the ipad now the the thing is is that because of the way that you get in this airplane we we walk up here we have to bend over and look that way and then sit down in the seat and then kick your legs in I hit my head on that damn compass almost every time I get in this airplane. Even though I know it's up there, I think I'm going to have to go rubber proof that thing because it's in the perfect spot for you to hit your head on. So when you're going in bent over with your head pointing that way, you just run right into that damn compass before you can even get turned. So you have to purposely think about turning your head before you get up there or you're going to knock yourself out. So that that's the the first thing. So let's get up here and take a look so we're we're here so we've sat down in the seat we're gonna you, you kind of have to kick your feet so you can see i have to turn my feet to get around that pedestal down there and then i have to do the same thing here now it's hard to show this but this is like a little midget dc3 um you got one window and it literally is right here so it's if you lean over to look at something you're going to hit your head on the window because it, it sticks out so you can see that the panel is recessed quite a ways up underneath this panel so what that means is that when you're flying anything that you have to do up here on the panel i gotta lean quite a quite a ways to get up to change any of my settings or to do anything up there at all so I like it in the sense that it, you know, the sun stays off of it and it gives you, you know, some contrast here to, to see your instruments and stuff. So going on trips and stuff, I do like the, the panel and the way that it, you know, the way that everything works, but it's just, it's very tight. And, and so this is a little uh, pedestal that's sitting here um, that, that we've added our headset mounts and things to, and that's where I've got the iPad mounted. Um, but it just sits in between the panel um, or the the glare shield here but it's you know it's a very small window um, even the side windows are, are pretty small um, so it's you know the view up here is not anything like what you get in the beach 18 but that's not really the thing that bothers me so you'll notice up here the, the where the window comes in this thing immediately starts to curve across here so what that means is that anybody like that that's as tall as I am, so I'm five eleven, and when I sit in here, I am constantly hitting my head, especially when I put my headset on. I'm constantly bumping this, and so what it means is that when I'm sitting in the chair, I end up having to lean over a little bit to stay away from that that roof up there because it's. Let's see if I can turn this thing around so so you'll you can see that you know my head even without my headset on right now if i sit up straight i'm i'm touching this and and so one of the things that i've thought about is redoing this this stuff to, to kind of get this picked up a little bit because there is a lot of a lot of slack in the in the top 
but that's something that you know has it bugs me every time i fly in here because i'm you know if i if i go to look outside i'm i'm hitting my head on this on the side and and so i'm constantly having to move my head around to keep from from bumping my head constantly so it's it's annoying um and it's just something you know you get used to it but it's it's something that i wish i didn't have to deal with because other than this i love flying this airplane um now another thing that we have here is you'll notice my knees um so so i i have my feet on the rudder pedals and the i really because of the pedestal that's over here and you know the way that the the panel right here comes all the way out here to my knees i don't have anywhere that i can put my feet when i'm flying like i i can't i can't stick them up under the rudder pedals to straighten my legs i can't go over the rudder pedals because i hit my shins so when i'm flying it's and because of all of the stuff that's down here like in the beach 18 you'll notice sometimes I'll fly and I'll stick my, my leg over here um, just to straighten my leg out, but I, I can't really do that comfortably in here. So I, I literally just end up sitting here, you know, like this and dealing with it. But when I'm getting out of here, I'm, I'm ready to straighten my legs. Um, so I love the panel. I love the, the way all of this stuff works. I, I, I'm, I'm not complaining about any of it. Um, I just, it, it does require you to spend a little bit of time figuring out how to get comfortable in here now while we're at it the emergency gear extension in this thing is extremely simple um, you basically pull this handle whether you're going to go up or down and then you crank the handle and it turns the worm gear out on the landing gear to put the gear down so it's it's very simple however you'll also notice that the chair itself where the chair attaches it actually is part so this is actually part of the chair and so it means that modifying this chair to make it lower so that you're not sitting up so high is a really tough thing to do in fact it's near impossible because of the way that all of this mechanism is all built into the chair itself so on the beach 18 they're separated so it gives you a few more options to actually work with. And at the back of the Beach 18, I mean the Lockheed, um, this is a little storage area. This used to be where the, the bathroom was. Um, this is an accordion door that actually opens up and covers this whole area so that you'd have privacy back here. Um, this entire compartment here, you get to from the outside of the airplane and you can get to from this door on the inside but that's your luggage department that's that's where you put uh, luggage um, and then also up in the nose you can put 200 pounds of luggage up in the nose area it's got a huge area up there um, so that's kind of the setup of of the lockheed all right so we have our air stair door on the beach 18. the door height is actually a, a good bit i didn't measure it but i think it's smaller than the Lockheed because I'm always hitting my back on it trying to get in and out um, so the door opening is not quite as big on here as it is on the Lockheed but it's not too bad it's just having that squared off door at the top makes it a little bit hard to get in and out of it so let's go ahead and take a look at it so this is the current setup of the Beach 18, but you know, there's a lot of different things you can do in here. There's actually, I've got a couch that goes down this whole wall and I took it out because we weren't using it a lot. And it's in, because the cockpit, the, the cabin is so narrow, um, it was hard to slide in between the, the couch and the, this chair. And actually we had another chair there. So trying to get in and out with all those chairs there was a little bit uncomfortable so we took those out and now we've got a chair here and then these two chairs and then the cockpit now that's a air conditioner that we stuck in here so that it wasn't quite so hot flying in there i love that thing my wife thinks it's very ugly so she won't let me put it in the lockheed but that is something that uh that i love um so if we take a look here real quick before we jump in the cabin if we look back toward the back that's all there is so there is no luggage area other than just behind that that strap um so you basically just stick all your bags and stuff back there um i mean it's a big area and it, it can hold a lot of stuff so i'm not saying that it's you know anything wrong with it 
it's just a, a different setup than what we had in the Lockheed. Now that is the spar, so you'll see that's what I was talking about that you have to step over to get up into the cockpit. Um, that thing is not quite so hard to get in the cockpit, but getting out of the cockpit, it can be a little dangerous. Um, and the reason is because, and that's one of the reasons I got this box sitting here. Um, the reason is because when you go to get out, the, this is a tail dragger. So the whole airplane's pointed down and you got to step over that great big hump and you don't have any room to stand up. So you're bent over coming out of there like an arrow shooting to make yourself embarrassed when you fall down. So, but, ugh. so we'll squeeze up in here. Now, you'll notice that I have the same dilemma here. I've got a pedestal sitting here, but you notice it has an angle to it and it's not near as tall. So all of the throttles and stuff are all back here out of the way. So I'm not, there's no way I'm gonna hit my legs on any of them. So when I'm getting in here, I can actually just pick my feet up and put them into, into place. Um, it also gives me the ability to ride like this if I'm cruising along and just want to relax a little bit. Um, so it's, you know, it's just a lot easier to, to move around in here. Now, when, now there's a, a door here that I have open cause I'm looking for a generator problem, but so you'll notice I've got more room in here for my feet. Um, I've got a little bit more leg room in here, but this is the thing. So you can see here the view outside of this thing is just incredible. I mean, we've got all the way 180 degrees worth of view. The wind is a little dirty, but you get the idea. Um, so the view in here is just tremendous. Um, the sticks, the, the yoke and everything is up here out of the way. You know, you, both airplanes have this piece that, you know, for the yoke that runs up. So when you're pulling this up and down, it moves up and down the wall. Um, so that piece is pretty much the same, but you'll notice the 18 yoke is a lot higher. So when you're flying in here, instead of holding everything down here low, you're, you're up a lot higher and it just makes it more comfortable. I got more room for my legs. I got more room for my knee pad if I have my board on my knee. Um, so it's just a lot easier to work in here. You'll also notice as far as, um, using the instruments, I'm not, I don't have to reach quite as far but they are all out in the sun so you know if the sun's shining in here there's nothing to stop it, it it's you know it can get rather warm up here um, because there's not a lot of shade um, but it you know it, it allows you just an unbelievable view when you're sitting up here flying the airplane so the instrument panel is you know all the same stuff in both airplanes not a lot different um, you do have here um, you've got oil shutters and things that I, th these are the doors that I was talking about that open up on the oil intake um, for the oil cooler. Um, these shut and open the doors for that. And then you've got shutoffs and stuff down here. Um, you just don't have any of that stuff on any kind of baffle or any kind of doors or anything on the Lockheed. It does it all for itself, which if it works, it's great, but I'm just finding that it doesn't work quite as well as the, you know, as the 18 does. Cause 18, I can literally set everything exactly the way I want it and not have to worry about some electrical thing doing it. So, okay. So the, uh, the one thing I wanted to talk, the last thing I want to talk about on the two airplanes is the cowling. So you'll notice that the beach 18 cowling is a clamshell. It's got a big top piece. And then it's got a big single bottom piece and they, they close together and you notice that they, they close out here on the back. So the, all of the air that comes through, comes through the cylinders, runs through the back and then exits out of these doors. And these are cow flaps that are on here. Um, and the STC that put the single port exhaust on the beach 18, from what I understand also removed most of the cow flaps but for some reason mine still has them on here but the cow flaps allow me to close these doors and open these doors depending on the temperature um, and so if the engines start to run a little warm i can open these doors up and it lets more air come through so basically the air comes through the engine compartment 
flows through the cylinders and then exits out of these holes up here at the top and then the, the exhaust holes down here on the bottom. So it, 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 it's a typical way that, that the cowling works. Um, so the problem with this is you get a, a good bit of drag from these engines because the, you know, the cowling sitting up here catching all that air and, and it just, you get a, a drag up here on the front. And so we're gonna go take a look at the cowling on the Lockheed so I can show you the difference there. All right, so this is the Lockheed cowling, and this is what's known as a NACA or NACA cowling, and it's different in a lot of ways. Um, one of the things that it that it does for you is the air. You, you'll notice that the the front of the cowling is wrapped around the engine a little bit more, so it's not the Beach 18 cowling. You know, is stops down in here. This one comes around more over the engine so it actually covers up a little bit more of the cylinders than the beach 18 does so the opening up here in the front is a little bit smaller but you'll also notice there's no cow flaps and there's no doors there's no exit vents or anything like that on it it's it's just a straight cowling it's also not a clamshell it's actually got three pieces so you got two pieces that close across both top parts of the top and then you got the one piece that goes around the, the bottom here but the interesting part about the NACA or knock, I don't know how you actually, the, the formal way of saying that, but the interesting part about it is, is that it was developed back in 1927, I think. And they, they were trying to find a, a more aerodynamic way to, to cool the engines and, and cover everything up. And so this is what they came up with. And so instead of having a, a couple places for air to come out and then having this sealed, what happens with this cowling is it's open all the way around the, the cowling. And so the, the theory is, is that because the air comes through and isn't being stopped, it's not, it doesn't have a, you know, a bunch of turbulence that gets built up inside of it. It has less drag and it, they claim 60% less drag around the engine. I, I don't know. They're not, the, the articles and stuff that I've read on it aren't real clear whether that 60% is between not having a cowling on the airplane at all and then putting this cowling on it or the difference between having a cowling like the Beach 18 to this. I would say that it's probably having no cowling on it and then going to this cowling, they got that, that percent of a gain. But um, in any effect, they, they claim that this is a more uh, efficient, less drag cowling than what's on the Beach 18. In truth, I have no idea, but that's that's the claim, and that's what we'll go with. Um, so, those are the big differences between the the Beach 18 and the Lockheed. I hope that you enjoyed this, and if you have any questions or anything, just post them, and I'll I'll try to get to everybody's questions.